Hello everyone and welcome to NFL Discussion. I am your host and NFL enthusiast, Ducky Doug. In today's episode, I'm going to discuss Monday Night Football, Week 16 of the 2022 NFL season. And we're just going to go ahead and get right into the action, starting with the Chargers, who go on the road and get the job done. It wasn't exactly pretty, and it didn't include any touchdown passes from Justin Herbert, but it doesn't matter. Los Angeles boards a flight to Indianapolis, hits, Lucas, hits the field at Lucas Oil Stadium, and takes care of business. The Chargers are gained the cold yard wise converted enough on third downs for this game and held the Colts to 0 10 on third down forced three turnovers and trusted Austin Eckler to punch it in twice which he did accounting for 12 of the team's 20 points there were moments of exciting creativity like the flea flicker that nearly ended in the highlight reel touchdown for Keenan Allen but overall it wasn't a game that be featured much in that team's yearbook reel which is fine the Chargers didn't need to be heroes on Monday night. They didn't need to do anything special. They just needed to be professionals and do their job, which they did. And they're heating up at the right time. Um, with uh, with his team winning just one of four games between weeks 7 through 11, Brandon Staley was looking closer to the hot seat a little over a month ago. Since then, though, the Chargers have won four of the last five and are trending in the right direction. They took down two teams in playoff position each of the last two weeks, Miami and Tennessee, then played well enough to top a team that they were supposed to beat. And a key part of that turnaround has been the return of Mike Williams, who played a key role Monday night with four catches for 76 yards, seemingly always finding an open space over the middle to keep drives going. Keenan Allen would also play an important role too, catching 11 passes for 104 yards Monday night. And the most significant change though has been the defense, which is on a heater when it comes to pressuring, pressuring opposing quarterbacks. In the last three games, the Chargers uh, have recorded a combined 13 sacks, which included seven against the Colts. The Chargers offense has been good enough to keep pace, though the ground game is still a work in progress. And the defense though, but the defense of their improvement is encouraging um, and it's certainly a part of you know their recent trend in the right direction and most importantly for the chargers they finally clear the playoff hurdle so los angeles has almost made the postseason in recent years but began 2022 with a playoff drought that extended back to the 2018 season thanks to the chargers winning monday night and some favorable outcomes elsewhere in the afc the Chargers are back in the postseason for the first time under Brandon Staley, who also secured a second consecutive winning season Monday night. January will also feature Justin Herbert's playoff debut, which should be a highly anticipated game for one of the NFL's uh, brightest young stars in our center. There's no telling how far the Chargers might go, but they're playing complimentary team football right now, no matter the opponent. They've overcome plenty of adversity as well, too, especially in the injury department, reaching the postseason after losing their Pro Bowl left tackle and Rashawn Slater, star edge rusher Joey Bosa, who's working his way back to the field. Um, and also JC cornerback JC Jackson. So it hasn't been easy for the Chargers, especially when they were forced to play of uh, uh, Mike Williams and or Keenan Allen, but they've accomplished the main goal, which is, you know, postseason, and for that, the Chargers deserve credit. So congrats to them. And um, as for the Colts, well, there is still no light at the end of the Colts tunnel. So Indianapolis can change coaches and quarterbacks, all at once but the story continues to remain the same as it has for the majority of 2022 the colts struggle to move the ball don't capitalize on most of the opportunities presented to them and make too many mistakes to win football games there's a reason they're four ten and one you know they <laughs> that's just who they are uh jeff saturday's first win as a coach feels like it happened a long time ago and there's no reason to believe that he'll uh get another one before the season ends nick Wolves first start with the team well that was about as much of a disaster as expected from a guy who has spent most of the season as the third string single caller he tossed three interceptions and that's all you need to know for that at one point Troy Aikman who's probably been who was probably bored of this game as he was with most games he's called this year uh wondered aloud if the Colts would consider going back to Sam Ellinger the guy who had got two starts in 2022 after Matt Ryan was initially benched the first time around um and then Sam got benched after Frank Wright the former head coach got fired um and really there's regardless of what the Colts do um yeah, they, they just, they, <laughs> it doesn't really matter what the Colts do at quarterback. They got three guys that are just not 
an answer on their center um, and really all they can do is just try to get through the next couple of weeks uh, just you know get through the next couple of weeks and then you're into the off season uh, but it's going to be certainly a busy off season because they have their work cut out for them I know Jim Mercy was talking about you know possibly running it back with Chris Ballard and uh, Jeff Saturday which honestly sounds like a terrible idea I know Jim Mercy wants the coach to be mediocre that's a pretty good way to do it now maybe it's better this time around but the main reason why the Colts have stinked as a football team is because they don't have a quarterback. And you think about who's bringing these quarterbacks in. Well, that's the general manager, Chris Ballard. So if you're going to run it back with Chris Ballard as general manager, basically Jim Mercy is saying that he trusts him to get it right at quarterback, which he doesn't have the track record to suggest that he's going to get it right. And then you look at Jeff Saturday, and it's like, you know, maybe he'd be better year two, maybe, but... If he does, yeah, but if Chris Bauer drops the ball on quarterback, it's just going to be the same thing again. So, really, Colts, you know, should be trying to do something different. But at the moment, it doesn't seem like they're interested in, you know, in being better. They're just interested in being mediocre. Which is a shame because their defense deserves better. You know, sure, last week they all Kirk Cousins to throw for 460 yards and complete the largest comeback in NFL history, but they responded positively on the defensive side of the ball in this game, keeping Herbert out of the end zone, holding Austin Eckler to under four yards per carry, and forcing two turnovers that should, uh, that the offense should have, you know, capitalized on to put some points on the board. Instead, the Colts defense would watch the offense drop the ball, well, um, well, maybe not literally dropped the ball, but certainly they wasted those opportunities and then shift, which shifts the workload back to the unit that has done most of the work for this team this season. Indianapolis went into Monday night ranked 12th in total defense and 10th against the pass. And although it gave up over 300 yards and a third down conversion rate near 50%, it still did enough to keep this game close in during the fourth quarter. The Colts offense dropped the ball again, though leading into yet another defeat. It's a tale that's similar to the one spawned in Denver, uh, which is another team that has just four wins to its name and also now doesn't have a tech coach anymore. So when you're sharing company with the Denver Broncos, that's when you know you're down bad as a franchise. But then again, they've been down bad since they fired Frank Wright as their head coach. So yeah, things just aren't looking. So things are looking up for the Chargers. They're in the postseason. Thanks. Continue to look bad for the Colts. Um, I think Nick Foles is probably one of them as a starter. Yeah, let's just go back to Sam Ellinger and just kind of ride him out the next couple of weeks and just see what happens. Probably about the best thing you can do. And with that, we'll go to wrap up this episode of NFL Discussion. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit that like button down below. Actually, before you go, probably shouldn't be recording videos close to 1 in the morning. Oh well, before you go... You know, again, hit that like button, sure. But also, there's one last thing that needs to. There's one more thing that needs to be addressed, and that is throwing in the towel, which is a weekly segment done on this channel, where every week I pick one team and throw in the towel on their season. Now, normally there's a shorts version done of throwing in the towel. However, that um, however last week short. Shorts was going to be the last one of this segment. There's been some change up happening and, and um, there's just no way to condense it into a shorts video too. So instead I'm going to try to throw it all into this uh, segment here on this uh, this episode of NFL Discussion. So the biggest thing with throwing in the towel is that it's not meant to last the entire season. Um, so I don't know if it's going to happen next week but it's happening this week. And pretty much the big thing that needs to be updated is that, well, I missed the Browns. I didn't throw in a towel on them, and, bef and they got mathematically eliminated. So there's that to address. And there's also a swap in the AFC self. The the Jag the with the Titans' loss and the Jaguars' win, the Titans are now atop the AFC self. They have the tiebreaker of a victory over Tennessee. And, um... Yeah, so now they hold the number four seed. So with that, I went ahead and swapped the Titans and the Jaguars. So now it's the Titans, it's the Jaguars who are the last team standing in the AFC South, and the towel has been thrown in on the Titans. That swap cannot be reversed. So there's that. Um, and also, to, yeah, and uh, yeah, with that, we're just going to go ahead and get into this week's team. So looking at the field, 
and the AFC pretty much, I can hold there pretty much every other division except the AFC East has been disqualified, so I'm kind of just picking between the Jets, Dolphins, and Patriots, and between those three teams, I'm on the Patriots, and then the NFC, I think there's four teams um, that I can pick from, the Giants, Commanders, Packers, and Seahawks, um, and uh, yeah, between those four teams, I went with the Seahawks. So Patriots versus Seahawks was the choice I had. And between those two teams, I went with the New England Patriots. So at 7 and 8, the Patriots are more likely than not going to miss the postseason in 2022. And there is more than one reason for that. But the biggest one is likely the team's offensive struggles. So after losing at home to the Bengals in Week 16, the Patriots are 25th in total offense. And in the opinion of Pat's beat writer Mark Daniels and Mass Live, the blame for those offensive struggles reside uh, reside on yeah reside on Bill Belichick. So just to quote what he said last year under Josh McDaniels, the Patriots offense finished sixth in the NFL and points scored in 15th in yards. Uh, they entered the game. The game against the Bengals, 17th in scoring and 25th in yards. The drop in offensive reduction is clearly due to Belichick's fa failure to adequately replace McDaniels, end quote. And it's not just a play calling play call this game. You think about Kendrick Bourne. He was New England's most effective receiver in that game against the Bengals, but he's barely played this season. Time and again, the Patriots appear reluctant to let Mac Jones challenge defenses vertically. Um... I know Bill Belichick said that he didn't throw a Hail Mary at the end of the Raiders game because he didn't think Matt could throw it far enough. And whether it's Ramondi Stevenson's game still in fumble against the Bengals or the disastrous, disastrous ladder, lateral in the week before, Patriots have committed costly mistakes at the worst possible time, as has annually been the case under Belichick. Patriots are an excellent defensive team, but until New England takes major steps forward to upgrade the offense, like hiring an actual offensive coordinator, the team will continue to be mediocre. So honestly, this was just a wasted season. It could have been, it could have been a better season, but because Josh McDaniels was it replaced with somebody who has experience calling offenses and everything else. So yeah, until the Patriots get an actual offensive coordinator, you know, ain't nothing happening. And you know, perhaps maybe you can get Max some more skill players. You know, there's nothing wrong with the guys he has, but. He just doesn't have a definitive number one wide receiver. And I think if he did, you know, that having that definitive number one wide receiver, it can make all the difference. You look at a team, a team like the Vikings and Justin Jefferson, right? Dude's a game changer. But uh, yeah, that is my team for this week, the Patriots. Hopefully we can run it back with throwing in the towel one last time for week 17. But if not, as always, I enjoyed the segment. And if you enjoyed this segment and this episode, be sure to hit that like button down below.